I swear, this shitstorm is like never gonna end when it comes to Ryzen. So I was browsing the old 4chan today, and of course, I, I'd like to stop by the G Board, also known as Technology, where they have a lot of stuff on computers, components, etc. And of course, lately there has been a lot of discussion on uh, AMD's Ryzen, especially in reference to its performance versus an i7-7700. And of course, you got people shilling for one side or the other, there's not really much of a balance. But today, I came across something that I don't know why no one tested this the first day that the the NDA was lifted. Well, I kind of know why, because this stuff takes time. But someone finally tested Ryzen 7 out with one of its four core CCXs disabled to bring the core count to four cores and eight threads to give us an idea of what a four core native Ryzen chip will perform like. Now this website, what I believe to be a Georgian website, the country, not the United States state that is, what they did is they were trying to get a really good idea of what Ryzen 4 core performance would look like versus KB Lake when clocked at the same clock speed. And because Ryzen 7 has issues going above 4.0 GHz, what they did is they brought the i7-7700K down to 4.0 GHz as well. In effect, the 7700K is being handicapped, but the idea is to look at the two architectures on a clock-per-clock, quarter-core -clock, basis, which makes some sense when we limit it to the same amount of clock speed on either processor. And we also need to look forward to the idea that maybe R the R3 and R5 might be 4.0 or faster. Two other possible issues were the limitation of DDR4-2133 speed, as well as the use of a GTX 1080 versus a 1080 Ti or a Titan XP. But knowing all this doesn't make these findings any less interesting, but they should be taken with a grain of salt. On a positive note, if these findings scale with clock speed and higher RAM speeds, then this is going to be a definite win for AMD and anyone who's been waiting for a quad-core Ryzen processor. Especially when we, need, when we need to consider that the prices for a quad-core Ryzen processor are going to be nowhere close to the price of a 7700K. Anyone who's been, pay attention, been paying attention to the aforementioned shitstorm that has been happening about Ryzen 7's appropriateness as a gaming CPU, I think this is going to restore a bit of confidence in investors, in gamers, and people who think that Ryzen 7 really isn't up to snuff as a gaming chip, when in reality it completely is. But it's always been in lieu of comparing it to the i7-7700K. The main problem being for Ryzen 7 is that it has 8 cores and 16 threads, but games are just not made for that kind of multi-threading. So what happens is games that are made Really, just games these days are pretty much made for quad-core CPUs. They're not made for eight cores. So systems like systems running something like an i7-7700K or something below that, even an Intel i5-7000 series uh, processor, they tend to run better on those chips in a lot of cases compared to Ryzen. And realistically, it has less to do with how powerful Ryzen really is, but more it's more a program scheduling problem on within the BIOS of the CPU, as well as possibly within Windows. There have been some tests with Linux and server applications, and Ryzen is a completely competitive product when it comes to per-core performance, as shown by some of these tests. But now that we've seen a four-core test uh, with Ryzen with half of it disabled versus an i7-7700, that's a lot of sevens, it's very interesting because now we're seeing four Ryzen cores go almost toe-to-toe -to -toe with an i7-7700K. Now, we're still talking about an 8-core chip that has to be disabled to half of its working cores in order to get this performance. So once again, we're still talking scheduling and the operating system and how it handles processing threads that's in a way that works properly with the Ryzen 7 processor. Not to mention the cost of that chip versus a 7700K as well as the higher clock speeds that the 7700K is going to be able to sustain versus an 8-core Ryzen chip. So I think it's really important to be clear here. We, I know AMD talked about using Ryzen as a, a 4K gaming processor, and you know people keep talking and, and touting up these 1080p benchmarks about Ryzen versus the 7700K. Yeah, the 7700K is superior to it, but they're both getting in so many cases just well over 60 fps which for most people is going to be that threshold of yeah that's what i really want but over time eventually games are going to start using all eight cores to the degree that they are capable of or at least i think they will eventually they will um 
and people are, and there are going to be people out there who had the 7700K, and they're going to look at the the Ryzen 7 CPU, you know, two or three years later, and they're going to be like, man, maybe I should have bought a Ryzen chip instead of a 7700K. I think that's completely possible. What's interesting is if you look at the AMD FX uh, 8350, all those bulldozer CPUs are actually score, they tend to score quite well now that there are actually games that are made to take advantage of eight threads. But that brings up another issue, is it's taken four or five years for games to kind of catch up to the architecture. Although, Bulldozer has plenty of other problems. Just like with AMD's GPUs versus NVIDIA, AMD, yeah, it, it, it ages like a fine wine. But the problem is, it's so important to get things right within the release window, as opposed to making consumers wait, you know, months down the line for a BIOS update or a driver update to get things competitive with your competitor. Intel and NVIDIA are great at making sure their products work really well at launch. Like minimal problems and things get a little bit better, but in general you've, you've, it kind of, it already peaks and it's delivering what it needs to deliver in order to be a compelling product. So for the time being, yeah. A 7700K is going to be pretty much the best CPU you can buy for gaming. But all the Ryzen 7 chips, they all deliver completely playable performance. And anyone who plans on having them for years and years, versus a person who's going to have a 7700 for years and years, the person with the Ryzen 7 is going to get a lot more longevity out of that chip. And it also goes to show that a company really needs to be careful in how it markets products and chooses its words. And that alone is making some people really want to burn AMD at the stake, which I, I think is, is taking it kind of too far. Yeah, people should be sort of mad about it, but I mean, Intel has done plenty of shit, so I'm not going to condone anybody. And same same thing goes with all the, the journalism that's been going on. you got some people that are kind of sort of hating on AMD for the words that they've chosen and the way they, they've tried to convince people, hey, benchmark it this way. This is the way we did it, and it's it's the best way to do it, or it, it makes it, where it makes the product look better than what it really is. And then, of course, you got the people who are completely shilling for AMD. I know I sound like an AMD fanboy, and I, I'll admit, I kind of am. But I'm not stupid enough to not look at things objectively, or at least I hope not. I mean, when I built my current system with an i5-4690K, <laughs> after the whole debacle with, with Bulldozer, I was like, hell no, I'm not going to build a new system. I mean, yeah, Bulldozer has the latent capabilities to deliver this or that. But I knew it was just like, go with a freaking 4690K. That chip is awesome. It'll deliver the performance that I need for the next, you know, two or three years. You know, I built the system just over two years ago. And it's still an awesome, awesome processor. Now, going back to talking about a quad-core Ryzen chip, this is all really good news for anyone who's waiting for that really awesome value proposition in Ryzen for a chip that just delivers excellent gaming today that goes pretty much toe to toe with the best i5s, the best i7s. You know, it, it may be a little bit less capable, it may be a little bit more capable, but in general, it's pretty much on par. Giving AMD the chance to really undercut Intel in those kind of more value oriented markets. Which means, of course, Intel has to counter that, and realistically, consumers win. And once again, I'm going to predict that the quad-core Ryzen processor as well as the hexa-core are all going to be really huge sellers with anyone who wants to build just an awesome gaming PC without having to pay the kind of prices people are paying for i7s today. And in lieu of that, all of Intel's i3 and dual-core processors are going to get huge price reductions in order to directly fight the four-core Ryzen processors that get released. Because if they're going to go toe-to-toe, core-to-core, you know, the whole i3 line pretty much just becomes obsolete. Especially if quad-core Ryzen prices are at the same level as i3s currently are. So, yep, I'm sure things are going to still get continuously more complicated as new chips come out and more things are figured out about Ryzen versus Intel Core processing architectures. Of course, the butthurt will continue and the shitstorm will continue. It'll always continue. It'll... War never... War. War never changes. So at the very end of this, I just want to say ob objectivity is incredibly important in all of this. As well as just being respectful of everybody. Everyone just needs to quit being a bunch of asshats. Everyone. That's all I have for y'all of y'all today. Y'all have a good one. My name is Blitzvogel. See you later.